this tutorial will show you how to shade realistic water droplets that look so real they could jump off your page. Your materials are so minimum, all you need is a pencil to draw with. If you have fancy drawing pencils, awesome. If not, I'm using a pencil that I have in my classroom. It's just an American's Best number two pencil. And I don't have a blendy stick, so I'm using toilet paper that I rolled up for shading. You could even use your finger, but I think a tissue, paper towel, or a little bit of toilet paper will work perfectly. So no fancy materials needed here. You can do this in your sketchbook because it's perfect practice for shading or any piece of paper will do. If you love learning about art, please subscribe and support my channel. I upload twice a week in the summer and once a week during the busy school year. Start by lightly sketching the shape of your water droplet. I'm not making mine a perfect circle. I'm using an organic shape, a shape you would find in nature. Then you want to map your highlights. So where would light hit this the most? I'm putting a little shape outlined on the left side and it needs to kind of flow around the shape or form that you've created with your first outline drawing. Then I'm gonna put one on the opposite side that also kind of curves around. With my pencil, I'm gonna shade around my highlights, pressing down for a medium value. If you've never shaded before, click the link above to practice doing a value scale so you understand how to shade and how to use value with a pencil. So this would be a medium gray. So it's not too dark, it's not too light, it's somewhere right in the middle. To make it look 3D, I'm pressing down slightly around my edges and towards the top right, I'm gonna make that a lighter value but not as light as white. Next, I'm using my homemade blending stick and I'm going to use it around my water drop to create a background shadow and to blend my values together. You can still see a slight dark to light, but it really does soften and gray everything. So going back with your eraser to get your highlights really mapped in there, and then you're gonna be shading a lot of dark areas to create a shadow. So a water droplet is a rounded shape and to create a darker shadow around the edges of your water droplet is gonna make it look like it's gonna pop off the page, it's so 3D. You can see on my right hand side of the video, I put a flattened marble that I have. And this is just a reminder when I'm looking at it, you can see the two highlights, you can see where the shadow hits it. And I'm not looking at it dead on like you guys are from an overhead view. I'm looking at it more from the side. So I'm darkening the top part of my water droplet. That's going to kind of give it the rounded effect. And I'm gonna make it as dark as possible on the bottom of the water droplet so it looks three dimensional. From here, I'm working my way from darkest at the bottom and pretty dark on the opposite top end. And I'm going to shade in going from darkest, dark, uh, dark gray, and then medium gray towards the center. Notice I'm always avoiding those really white highlights because although I can erase them, it's still best to leave them white. I'm using my pencil eraser when necessary, and I'm not gonna use my blending stick quite yet. It's a great tool to blend and make smooth value, but it does kind of make everything have less contrast. So I'm gonna try and use my pencil for most of the work, and then my homemade blended blendy stick, which by the way is just toilet paper, Paper, um, to kind of soften and and make those transitions flow together with my tissue I'm going to go around the highlights to soften so it's not just like a block of white then I'll go back in and in the center part erase you'll see me do this a couple times right now it kind of looks like a jelly bean I always make everything about food the the beauty of expensive art supplies is a tortillion or a blending stick has a really fine point. So that's why you pay money for art supplies because if I wasn't using just toilet paper, I could get like the neatest, cleanest edge when I was blending and softening my values. However, the focus of my channel lately has been inexpensive tutorials that you can do in your sketchbook, at home, or in the classroom without needing expensive art supplies. I'm bringing my flattened marble back on the scene because I'm interested now in the background. So you can see on the right hand side of my marble, there's a cast shadow and it's pretty light, but it's there. Look at the top and the bottom of the marble, um, like the opposite of where the highlights are. You can tell that's the darkest part. And although my shape is different, I did kind of use where the highlights and shadows were as a guide. I am adding a cast shadow and my blending stick is gonna be really important in making this flow and not look like it's just stuck on there. Watch how much the blending stick 
erases that value. That's why I try to limit how much I use it because although it is darker, it really just kind of blended that value in. Why not repeat? So let's do this again a little bit faster. I'm drawing my organic shape a little bit smaller. I'm putting my two highlights that curve around the shape of my water droplet. I'm shading from darkest to lightest from inside to from outside in, so darkest around the edges. Notice I'm not using my blending stick yet, wanting to make sure it's darkest down on the bottom. Your highlights would be the same and so would your shadows when you're doing repeated shapes. Notice I use my blending stick to smooth the um, shading in the inside of the water droplet, but also to create some gorgeous gray spots in my background. Notice I'm darkening my other water droplet as I go. Now that you've seen me do two, I'm gonna pick up the pace even more, and my goal is to do several of these on my page. You'll see me go back and forth and work on some that I've already done because I want the shadows to be as dark consistently, the highlights to be as light consistently, and my gray light background as well. This is such a great exercise to practice shading. It really does look like water that is on a window when raining, and it's just a great way to sharpen your skills. So this is definitely something that would be a great homework assignment or an in-class exercise if you're an art teacher. And if you're an artist of any level, this is a great way to practice shading without just doing a value scale. So here's my finished sketchbook page. Water droplets shaded using just a cheap pencil and a wad of toilet paper. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for sticking around. And if you want more ideas for drawing, check out these videos. And if you're an art teacher, check out all of my sketchbook assignments at thatartteacher.com.